In the past couple years, the Savannah Bananas have taken over the baseball world as the greatest show in the sport. And today on the show, I talked to Jackson Olson, who is the starting third baseman on the Savannah Bananas and is also a social media star himself through some of the most popular content in the sports world. We talked about his entire story from D1 baseball to Savannah Bananas, what it was like for him to travel to 20 plus stadiums this summer for content. And overall, it was just a great conversation. So without further ado, enjoy the show. The show with Dan and Joe. This is episode two. This is episode three. Episode four. Episode five. In the pen, I pull up heavy. In the lay up on a eddy. I got three holes, run the valley. In New Dios, not for belly. Stay that money, I for Perry. I shoot droppers, call me Larry. Then they ain't Yonkers, I need a Navy. Don't need a sponsor, hurry to heaven. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the show. We have a special guest today. Would you like to introduce yourself real quick? My name is, can we, can we start over? Yeah, because do you want to read? Reach- all right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the show. So we have a special guest today. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, so my name is Jackson Olson, 25 years old, recently 25 years old. Happy birthday. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I am a baseball player, content creator, and uh, play for the Harlem Globetrotters of baseball, the Savannah Bananas. Dude, I'm just like so intrigued by your story because I remember you showing up on my For You page way back, like before I was even doing baseball content, and you became like the guy who's making baseball content. And that's just so cool for me because that's what I ended up trying to do too. So yeah. what was your experience back in like when you started making TikToks in like 2020 and around then? What was your idea going into it? Yeah, so I actually, the reason that I started this whole thing, uh, my teammates at Hartford, they saw this funny Rihanna trend. It was like the Disturbia challenge. And <laughs> I was like, Disturbia challenge? Like what, what is it? What is TikTok? Like what is all of this? I had no idea what any of it was. And um, we put on like these, we went to Target and got these crazy outfits and... Uh, <laughs> we just did this trend and we danced in our living room and I'm like, this is pretty cool. And, um, my two friends after we, they posted it, they were like, whatever. And they just didn't look at TikTok for the next couple of days. But I picked up my phone and I'm like, this app's kind of cool. Like what else can we do? Like what else can this be? And I decided like, all right, I'm seeing a lot of dances. I'm seeing, that's what all I'm seeing. Can I make this into a baseball account? Would people watch funny baseball skits like SNL, like that type. And so that's what it, that's the, I, where the idea started and um, just kept going, posted every single day. My first like 20 videos got like 100 views. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no. That's how it goes my though, yeah. My teammates would see it and be like, oh God, like what are you doing, Jackson? Like what, what is this? And um, I just kept going and kept going. One of them finally uh, blew up a little bit and then I posted a video almost every day for three years. That's so. crazy, man. Now you're at 800K on TikTok, which is nuts. Dude, and when you hit a mil, that's going to be crazy. A mil is such a big <laughs> milestone. A million people is so many. So obviously you started picking up some traction then eventually the Savannah Bananas was like a huge announcement that you made not too long ago. So what was the choice to, make, to you know, go to Savannah, Georgia and be with the Bananas? How did that process come about? Yeah, so it actually happened. Um, the reason that I'm playing for this team right now, I attribute it to the fact that I was on this MLB tour mm-hmm. and I was traveling to 20 Major League Baseball stadiums. And in the middle of it, there I think I was at the Twins at Target Field and I'm watching, the, I got there really early and I was watching guys just throw and have a good time and taking BP and I'm like, I need to play baseball again. It's just something mm-hmm. popped in my head where I'm like, I need to play baseball again. I don't know what team it would be for. I don't know if it's gonna be indie ball. I don't know if it's gonna be a men's league, whatever. And went that night, I was laying in my hotel bed and I'm scrolling on TikTok and I see the bananas and I'm like, I'd already seen them way like a lot before, but it never clicked in my head that like, mm-hmm. maybe I could play for them. And um, just saw one of their dances on TikTok and I'm like, all right. So I made a video and I'm not sure if we can show it or how that would work. Of course, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I made a video and I basically said like, when you're finally okay with uh, not playing baseball anymore. And it was a video of me kind of just like, like being kind of upset, but whatever, like it's baseball's over, but I'm okay with it. Like I'm finally okay. And I look to my right and the words on the screen say, but you see the Savannah Bananas TikTok and Uh. it's a montage of them dancing and doing crazy antics. And, um, it wasn't like an application to be on the team, Mm -hmm. but it was kind of like shooting my shot without shooting my shot. And Jesse Cole, the owner reached out, he DM me and was like, Hey Jackson, saw the video. Really cool. If we can ever work together, let's do it. And at that point I'm like, okay, maybe he just means like content. Like maybe I just come like make a few videos. Um, like Zach Campbell recently just did. He came and made a couple of, I thought that was what it was going to be. I just come make TikToks and, um, went on a call with him like two weeks later and I'm like, Hey, um, I played third base in the Cape Cod league. If you ever need a th- I know you have a shortstop. I know you have a second baseman. Those are your key guys, Ryan Cox, Dalton Malden, two of the best guys for the bananas. But I saw there was an opening at third base and I'm like, if you ever need someone to fill that spot, let me know. And I'm at the College World Series with Trevor Fonstrom. You know mm-hmm. Trevor? Of course, Trevor. And, um, Trevor. 
and I, yeah, what's up, what's up, Trev? And um, I show him my phone, and it said Jesse Bananas, and it was an incoming call from him. And I'm like, what is this about to be? I hadn't talked to him in like three months. Oh, wow. Like, what is this about to be? And gets on the phone, and he's like, hey, are you in? And my, I just like, I just, st- I'm, I look at Trevor and I'm like, there's no way this man just said this to me. Like, are you in? And I'm like, yes, 1 million percent, whatever that means. Yes, I'm in. Yeah. And, um, he was like, yeah, I mean, we would love you to be our third baseman. That's so cool, dude. I, always, I forget that you were so good at baseball too. Like you were actually <laughs> nasty D1 at Hartford, which is so cool. Cause Northeast, like I'm a Northeast guy and I have a bunch of buddies who go to Hartford. Um, and then Stetson, which is nuts. So what was it like? What was your college experience for playing college baseball? How was that, you know, playing D1 baseball? What was your experience doing that? Yeah, so it was great. Um, I committed pretty, pretty early to Hartford. Um, they gave me the best. Justin Blood gave me the best opportunity to play right away. I forgot Justin Blood because he's at Keene State now. Keene State. Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talked, yeah. That's so wild. Yeah, that's okay. crazy. Yeah, 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 he's a good dude. And um, so I committed early my junior year um, to that school, and it was a great decision. And we ended up winning the first ever conference championship mm-hmm. in Hartford baseball history. Um, and it was just a really cool experience doing that and kind of like putting Hartford on the map a little bit. And we actually played at Stetson in the regional, and that's the main reason why I went to Stetson yeah. for my COVID year, yep. because uh, the coaching staff saw me, the infield coach, Brandon Brewer, saw me and was like, we want him to play either shortstop or third base for us. Yep. Is um, Trimper, Trimper still the coach? He's still there. Yeah, yep. yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And um, so yeah, that's how that all happened. But college experience was great. Mm-hmm. Never thought it would lead to this, but I'm thankful that it did. I, I texted you like a, a week ago because you posted a video um, on Instagram about like the greatest showman and it was like connection to the bananas. We were just talking about it earlier. And that literally gave me chills. I was like, man, that's like surreal. Like that's crazy that your some of your most viral TikToks earlier were like about how you love the greatest showman. And then like you were literally... The, it's just so weird. It's just the Savannah Bananas are the greatest show in baseball and becoming like the greatest show in the world. That's just, is that just surreal for you? It is. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that like I, the TikTok you're talking about, I think, I think this, uh, this is the one where, I mean, I got a greatest show in costume when I was at Stetson and at first I'm like, I cannot wear, someone send it to me. Actually, I put out a Snapchat story and I'm like, it was when I was really falling in love with the greatest showman and the whole story of it all. Um, and I'm like, Hey, if anyone wants to like give like send me a Halloween costume, like I would love to wear it for Halloween. It just started out as I was going to wear it for Halloween to a Halloween party. And I, I did, but then I'm like, maybe I can make some TikToks mm-hmm. in this. And my first one, I was nervous cause it was the first time that I'd ever like really done something weird and crazy and like just weird. Yeah. And like <laughs> on social media. something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah. And that first TikTok, um, I basically, I'm in, I'm in my bathroom and I turn around, I'm in my greatest showman costume and it, the TikTok, the recent TikTok that I posted is me in front of 4,000 fans at Grayson Stadium doing the exact same motion. Bro, that's And it's crazy. just like, again, I don't know if you can show that. I can, it, It's yeah, probably not going yeah, to make sense you, to people yeah, yeah, yeah. hearing it. Um, but the chills that I got from that moment were, and I had to learn a choreographed dance too. That was actually the hardest part of the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, was the weirdest yeah. part where like yeah. I had to learn a dance and I couldn't really hear the music because the fans in Savannah are so loud. Seems like it, it feels yeah. like there's 30,000 people there. That's there's so 4,000. Cool. Um, so I had to like really listen. And right when I heard like the main thing, main uh, song come on, I'm like, all right, I got to dance now. First dance ever on a baseball field in a greatest showman costume. Like, and you crazy. just full send. You went in. Full send. Yeah. So that's cool because we were talking earlier also about like, you know, you just have to. F- go all in like if you want to be successful in something you have to like commit to it and a lot of there's a lot of doubters a lot of like naysayers and stuff i'm sure you've dealt with that social media can be super toxic so you know what's your perspective on dealing with like doubters especially social media but just doubters in life on what you're trying to accomplish yeah i mean there's obviously like you said there's a lot there's going to be people um like your podcast is amazing there's going to be people that say they hate it and the savannah bananas are amazing there's going to be people that say they hate it it's Mm -hmm. it's just how it goes and i think the more Honestly, the more haters you have, the better, mm. because that means the more people that are the more people that are judging you, the better. Obviously, if you're doing bad stuff, right. then that's not right. 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 <laughs> you right. don't want that. You yeah. don't want you don't want to be infamous like that. <laughs> um, like, What's your advice to like kids who are trying to make TikToks but are afraid of like what people are going to say about them? You just have to do it. Actually, it's a re- really funny quote. Uh, Sam Claycamp, who was in the Party Animals, uh, first meeting we had, Jesse Cole walks in, um, and he's basically just giving his whole speech about how you have to buy in, be all in. And Sam Claycamp raises his hand and goes, if, if Savannah, come, Savannah, who runs the um, TikTok for the Savannah Bananas, so perfect. Wild, yeah. So perfect. <laughs> um, if she comes up to you and says, hey, you want to be in this TikTok? Just, and I'm not going to say the word, just effing do it. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of our slogan the whole summer series, like just effing do it. Like if someone says like, want to be in this TikTok? 
or want to do this different thing, just do it. And I think that's a great message to younger kids where like, you just have to put yourself out there because you're never going to know if you don't try. And with the world we're living in right now, everyone's on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I was, I mean, I was kind of the uh, guinea pig. Not, not just me. A lot of kids were in 2019 posting because we didn't really get the support and the, uh, there was basically just no support. It's crazy for how it flipped. Like TikTok was like kind of weird and like out there, and you're like, "What it dances?" And then it's now it's the biggest thing ever. Everyone has it. So yeah, crazy. It's wild. And crazy. it's funny that you say that because I was watching some of your videos last night, and then the one at Alabama where he's like, "The guys like stick to TikTok or whatever," and you hit the home run. Mm-hmm. Can you take me through that moment real quick and what that was like? Yeah, that was nuts. Um, I was getting hate the entire uh, series, and before the game, there were fans that were coming there early, and there wasn't. I mean, you know, college baseball stadiums, like there's not much security. Like you, people can walk right up really. Um, even if the gates aren't open and I w- people were screaming my name from like, it felt like a mile away, like TikTok, TikTok kid. And I can't say literally 75% of what they were saying to me because it's so bad and explicit. <laughs> and so finally the, it was so weird because I walk up to the plate and that at bat and there was a moment where everything got quiet and it was the first time all, all day, all series that I just heard complete silence. And then right when the silence broke, this guy yells, stick to TikTok in the outfield. And I heard him say TikTok. I didn't hear him say stick to TikTok. Mm-hmm. And I had a home run. And then I come in the dugout and all my teammates were like, did you hear what the guy said? Did you hear what he said? And I was like, yeah, he said something about TikTok. And I was like kind of desensitized from it because I'm like, whatever. Like I've, I've been hearing that the whole game. I know, I know. And they're like, no, he said stick to TikTok and you hit a home run. And I'm like, get me that footage right now. I need <laughs> yeah. to post it on TikTok. Dude. <laughs> That's so funny. That's crazy. And then it went viral and everyone saw that. And that's just such a cool, that's like a real life, like F you, like I'm going to keep doing my thing moment. I remember Mm. when I, my, my biggest video ever was a Vanderbilt commit. We played him in uh, prep school season last year. I gave about a moonshot to this kid, like home, like 400 feet, pimped it. Like he flipped the bat, all that stuff. And a kid uh, on the other team goes, yeah, put that on TikTok because they knew me as like TikTok I think I kid. Saw that. I think I saw this. It, t- it was like the Michael Scott meme where like yes, I, it yes, pauses yes. right before he yes. hits it yep, and he's yep. like, oh God, please don't. No. Yeah. So I tried to make it funny and I, the, the kid goes, put that on TikTok. I'm like, all right, I will. Got like 3.5 million views yeah. and that's like what really kickstarted all my stuff because then all my podcast clips got more views because of that. People started seeing my other stuff. So yeah. it's kind of a full circle moment where like, yeah, they're chirping and stuff but then it's like after the game, they're like, yo bro, love what you do. And I'm like, Hmm. Like, yeah, it's interesting how they switch like that. So it it's is. just, it's it just is. weird. It's a weird world. But like, once yeah. you kind of full send, like, go all in. You know, you can. You got to go all in. You got to go all in. But yeah, dude. Yeah. So let me pivot a little bit. So I know you moved from New England. You're a New England guy, and now you're living out here in Southern California. Same thing as me. So what's it like being out here in LA? It's great. It's definitely a change. Um, I came out here originally because I wanted to change, and I wanted to kind of see a different part of the world, and or not the world, the country. And, it feels um, like a different world, though. feels like a different <laughs> world, for sure. And it's really made me more independent um, in a way that I never thought was possible before. And I, I mean, I went on that MLB tour. I'm not sure if that would have happened. I'm not sure if I would be playing for the bananas. I'm not sure if any of this would be happening if I didn't make that move because I just kind of, that was when I took control of my life. I was like, you know what? When you move across the country, like my dad drove with me 44 hours from Connecticut. And when he left and got on that plane, I'm like, this is the first time in my life where I feel alone. And it was the best thing that's ever happened to me, feeling yeah. alone. It's so. like extremely scary, but also like very freeing. I feel like you're just like, it's just me. It's just me. Like I felt the same thing when I moved out here because it was like my family's back in New Hampshire and mm. like they can come visit, but it's like, no, like it's, it's just me out here. But you t- t- talked about that uh, MLB tour. So what was it like seeing all those stadiums? I remember I saw you at the All-Star game and I'm like, how are you doing? Like, great to meet you. And you're like, I'm, just, I'm tired, but you know, I'm going. So I, you were just moving around so much. So what was that experience like? That was crazy. I mean, I can just start off by saying there was one point where I went to, I think it was, I can go back and look at this, but I think it was in 10 days I went to eight games. And I was taking flights and I would get off a flight, go to the hotel at like 8 a.m., go to a 1 p.m. game. And it was, it was a lot. But the thing that I'm really happy about, and like we were talking about earlier, having content to look back at and be like, wow, that was a great experience. Like, if I don't have videos of that stuff, I wouldn't remember any of it because it was all happening so fast. And I think that's another thing for young kids, like start recording everything you're doing. Um, obviously it was my job to do that. Mm-hmm. And it was really fun. But like, if you record stuff, 
it's going to make you remember it and re- remember the good memories. And um, yeah, working with all those teams was just so it was it was surreal. That's so for sick. Sure. We got to talk about the Bananas tour, the 2023. That's like yeah. a big deal. I totally forgot about that. That TikTok <laughs> fired me up. That was so awesome, and also yeah. it went super viral. So, want to explain what the Bananas are doing? Yeah, we are going on a. This is very controversial at the moment because my TikTok comments are going crazy. Uh, world tour. We're not traveling the world yet. It's a national tour, but we're calling it the world tour because eventually we are going throughout the world. Um, and we're going to 33 cities in eight months, and it's going to be nuts. And we're bringing the show on the road basically is what, what it is because we don't call them games, we call them shows. Mm-hmm. So show on the road. All right, guys, I would like to take a quick minute to talk about the sponsor of today's episode, which is Fire Jibs. Like, I, I know you guys with Crocs, you love your jibs. You want to collect all those charms and stuff. Dude, like Crocs are coming back. No, like not even, they're back. Crocs are back. I am not on the wave yet, but I know how, like my like Leo, like Leo's, he loves, shout out Leo. I know you love the Crocs, bro. So, so they have the best quality jibs available. Use code DSARM20 for 20% off your order. They have super fast delivery and oh, on orders over, twenty dollars they have free delivery that's guys guys it's a steal so go check out these jibs i mean they're super dope if you're a croc guy you know you got to start you know building up that collection so check out fire jibs thank you so much for supporting the episode like i said disarm 20 for 20 percent off now back to the episode with jackson hopefully you guys are enjoying so yeah i know we touched on it a little bit like the game time mlb tour but what was it like seeing all those stadiums and then just seeing the numbers pile up on social media what was that kind of experience like doing it so it's actually funny. The first video I posted, I went to Dodger Stadium for my first game, and the video got like six thousand views hmm. and like not not many interactions. And I'm like, oh no, I have to do a lot more of these, and like I'm contracted to do what, contracted to do all these. And um, I was like, oh no, all these videos are just gonna flop every single one. And then I posted the Angels one, and I posted the Padres one. The Padres one got like hundred k. And then every single day, I just saw like a bump till it went. The Dodgers one went from like six to seven K, mm. then seven to 10 and then 10 to 500 K. Oh my God. <laughs> and so they yeah. all started blowing up like, like crazy. And, um, people were like, Oh, like go to this stadium next, go to the stadium next. And I was kind of entertaining those comments, like trying to make it more interactive. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I knew exactly where I was going sure. every single day. Right. And people just wanted to see it. And then I incorporated the food with it too. So I'd go to these stadiums oh, and yeah. the social media teams would be like, all right, like, what do you want? What do you want to eat? Like, <laughs> can we make an everything Jackson ate at, um, American family field? And so that was a huge part of it. The food aspect, because people were wanting the stadium review, but they're also wanting the food review too. And you just do those all with every stadium you go to. So it's like unlimited content. That's yeah, so cool. Yeah. And then it's actually crazy because those food videos led to a pretty crazy thing that hasn't been announced yet. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, wait, didn't you allude to that yesterday or on TikTok yeah. or on your story? Yeah, yeah on my a, story. So, so there's like, a big thing coming. Big thing I'm coming. Excited. When is um, it going to be announced? So it's going to be announced potentially next week. Um, it's, it's, it's most likely happening. It, can, it, it is happening. Yeah. Uh, I can say it right now. So I'm. <laughs> Dude, but we can't. We can we say that? We can't say that in the. We can't put it in the um, episode, right? I can no, but like leave. a later, a later clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Later clip. Yeah, that's so cool. So I'm gonna be like, you're about to say it, then I'll cut it and be like, yeah. wait for the announcement. Wait for the announcement. Yeah, dude, that's so sick. Oh my god. See, like, I won't even say. I won't say anything more. But like, that's kind of something we want to end up doing in the yep. future. Something like. It'll congrats. be fun. Thank you. It'll yeah, be fun. congrats and like, um, man. So you've had a lot of really cool moments recently. What's been? What was your best moment of the summer? Best moment of the summer, it was um, definitely while I was playing for the Bananas, and I'm not sure if anyone knows this that hasn't been to a Bananas game, but before the game, we walk into the crowd and have a parade. Oh. So they be, the, all the fans make a tunnel for us, and we walk down this tunnel and give everyone high fives, and we do a Hey Baby dance, and we walk out of the tunnel. We actually, we walk in, then we run out. So it's really cool. Like We, we sprint out of the, um, out of the so line. Cool. So the first game we actually we usually go outside the uh, first base dugout and just go because the line isn't like the lines are long but they're not like crazy crazy and our director of entertainment Zach Frangelo was like guys we have to go to right field right now and we go to right field and we look at the line and it's past the fence so it's literally I can't like maybe a quarter mile long so cool and so seeing all that was the first time I had been in a bananas uniform and seen all the bananas fans 
it was the craziest thing. The band starts playing their, uh, their music and it was literally insane. You see all the smiling faces and it was just incredible. Bro, that's amazing. And I know you talk about a lot on social media, like how amazing the experience is with bananas and how you kind of like kind of finally feel like you're at a place where like you're full, like everyone is wants to like, you had that one TikTok where it's like, you know, where, what it was like, you know, in D1 locker room and all that stuff and people are kind of judging you and then in bananas, it's like, yo, Jackson, I got this idea for a TikTok. Mm-hmm. So what's that like just being around like-minded people with the bananas? It's incredible. It's so cool being able to finally be around people who want, first of all, they want to grow on social media and I'm, I'm not that I can even help them. I can, I can lead them to TikTok, but it's all on them. Like if they have to come up with the creative ideas and they are doing a great job at it. And like Dan Oberst, he had like, he's a first baseman. He had like 2000 followers coming in and now he has over 10 K. That's crazy. And because he was so, he was always like, all right, is this a good idea? And we would collaborate on stuff. And it wasn't just me like teaching guys. It was us going back and forth and them saying like, Hey, this would be a really good idea. And, um, I would say the coolest moment probably of my entire life so far is very last game we get done with all the game we get done with the game and we go out in the plaza we have a huge plaza party afterwards and we're dancing and signing stuff and having a really good time and um i walk back in the locker room just to get my stuff at the very end ryan cox the shortstop runs in the locker room and he was like dude we got to make this tiktok really quick uh vincent the dancing umpire which everyone has seen the dancing umpire Mm -hmm. um he wants to make a video really quick so I walk out and there and all these guys it was like a it was like an out of body moment where I see all these guys like setting up this TikTok and I'm like this is where I'm supposed to be like this is right where I'm supposed to be and I want to play for this team until I'm like 35 like so <laughs> like I don't see another another place I want to be and that's why I post about it so much mm-hmm. because it really truly is a testament to following exactly what you want to do setting a plan setting goals and just like carrying them out and then you're, you end up where you're supposed to be. That's so cool, man. What does your like, day in the life look like for not even just planning? What, yeah, yes. what does your just day in the life look like at this point? Yeah, so at this point right now, I'm trying to train. I'm trying to get my body right because I didn't play baseball for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. So I came in that first night facing a guy who was throwing 90 and doing a dance, and I had to do some dances, and it was like crazy. So I realized, like, okay, I need to be in baseball shape, but also I need to be in entertainment mode the whole time. So that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, ramping up the TikToks, ramping up, like learning line dances uh, in the morning. I'll go work out and then I'll come back here and literally like I'll learn a line dance <laughs> because that's, that's what Dude. we do. And I mean, eating a lot, um, eating healthy because obviously I was not eating healthy on the stadium tours, mm-hmm. um, trying to eat healthy and just kind of relaxing because I feel like this is the time for me right now to uh, unwind and just relax and like realize what's about to happen in these next eight months. That's so cool. And I feel like you must be getting so many, I mean, you are getting so many opportunities that you just wouldn't have even thought is possible because you're kind of like paving the way of like TikToker, TikToker, I hate that, like content creator doing stuff and like brands are seeing like, oh wow, like he, what he's doing is really valuable for, could be really valuable to our brand. Um, so is it overwhelming to you to see like these big time brands like reach out to you and be like, we love what you do? Or is it more like gets you amped up and excited? It, bo- a little bit of both. Uh, sometimes I'll get an email and I'll be, I mean, I have an agent now who's able to help me, which is huge because I mean, like having Max, he's from Buckwald Sports. Um, and it's great having someone who is like keeping me sane because I'm a very high like energy person. So when I see an email come in, I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. And I, I like want to say yes right away. And then he'll tell me like, Hey Jackson, we got to calm down. Like we got to have the business side of it too. I know you're excited, but like, so it's kind of a good, uh, match right there. And, but I get really pumped about some, some stuff, especially like some stuff coming up soon. Like I would get an email and I just freak out. Mm -hmm. I freak out. I think we got pretty much everything covered. Is there anything else you'd want to talk about bananas or life or anything? We'll definitely do a part two in like six months I mean stuff yeah. changes so fast dude it's crazy we gotta do it at Grayson Stadium that's what I wanna do that Historic was my Grayson idea Stadium. on the field yeah that would be sick yeah oh man I mean and they I, let you do whatever you want there that's so, so like cool. you can do whatever you want I feel like I would feel at home there too I'm like yeah let's make the yeah, all day. no literally yeah I'm not on the field dude yeah. yeah I thought about like you know just have like a table like this set up but it's like Yankee Stadium behind you oh dude like that's just be so sick and I don't know I think we're very optimistic about our future and I'm sure you're optimistic about yours. Um, man, where, like, where do you see yourself in like t- three years if you could even think about it? Yeah, I definitely, I see, um, my life going still the social media route. Um, but potentially, I mean, this has been my dream since I started doing those food TikToks last year 
um, to have kind of an Anthony Bourdain, no reservations type show where I'm traveling around, but make it sports, make it. Um, and I've gotten a couple people reaching out saying, Hey, we could do this. We could produce this potentially. Um, but I'm not sure I'm at the right time in my life right now to be able to do that. And, um, just incorporate food, travel, sports, and yeah. Dude, like, same with us. Like, that's what we want to do. I mean, I, not necessarily the food part, but I love food. But, like, the travel, the sports, to just, like, making stuff to inspire people. And that, I think I feel like that's what it comes down to. Like, you want to inspire people and show, like, look, this, look what I'm doing. You guys can do it, too. Yeah. Is that a big part of, like, what you, your motivation, like, to inspire, like, kids and stuff? 100%. That's where all, I mean, my, when I think, sit down and think about a TikTok, that's my first thought. This 12-year-old kid... David from Indiana, like I know he's watching my video because he comments first on all my videos. But I know like that comment isn't what he's actually feeling. He, I want him to watch that video and be like, wow, okay, I guess I don't have to go crazy and party in high school. Like I, I, if it's, it's okay if I'm kind of like outcast in high school because I'm working hard and following what I want to do. And um, so that's where the primary thought goes. And that's why I keep a lot of my stuff PG because I know these kids are watching um, and they want to be able, they want to be inspired, but they also want to laugh and they want to be able to show cry their parents and, and be like, look like this. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the, the craziest part is when I'll have parents messaging me saying, Hey, my son and I like your videos. And that's when it really hits where I'm like, Oh my gosh. And then someone literally said, my son is being you for Halloween. We have to get the great, we have to get the greatest showman costume. Uh, mm-hmm. we already have the bananas Jersey. And I'm like, like you don't, you're not dressing up as P.T. Barnum or the greatest showman. You're dressing up as me. It's like, that's not how it's supposed to go. <laughs> that's so <laughs> like, crazy, bro. Oh, that's so cool. That gave me chills. Just like thinking about like, like, like when I post videos, a lot of times I'm thinking about like myself when I was 12, like what would me at 12, 13 yeah. years old, like kind of insecure and like scared, but like has this like vision, but like is afraid of what people like middle school, dude, middle school was, was horrible. Brutal, <laughs> so brutal. It's like, Worst time of my life. I think about if I could inspire myself at that age or what I would do. So that's a big motivation for me too. Uh, and then also a big motivation for me is like proving people wrong. Like I'm a little like spiteful. Is that ever you? Are you a little spiteful where it's like these people used to talk about me and now I'm like successful or are you more just like I'm on my own? Yeah. I mean, I thought about this yesterday, actually. I think people that, um, think about that too much and think about the spite too much that fuels what they do. You want positivity to fuel what you do all the time because that's how you'll get to the next level and that's how you'll like progress in your career. Because if you think about long term, like I always think about long, long term, then I think about really short term. And all those short term decisions of you saying like, I'm going to make this video because like this is like making me mad or whatever. You look back in five years and you're like, oh, like why did I make that video? Why didn't, why wasn't I just positive? And why wasn't I looking at like the bright side of things? And that's what I've been trying to do. And there's a lot of negativity and a lot of, um, moments where I'm like, I really want to like, like I, I want to show and express my anger towards this one thing, but I can't do it because I know that it's not the coolest thing you can possibly do is be unfazed by stuff. When people are like, wow, I'm surprised. Like I want people to be like, wow, I'm surprised he didn't respond to that comment, like coming at his life and just like coming at every aspect of what he's doing wrong or whatever. And it's like, yeah, I don't want to respond to that because it shows I have bigger things to do and more important stuff to do, not respond to like these kids that are just these 12 year old kids sitting in front of their phone. Like, Oh, I don't like this kid. Cause he posts TikToks. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, who cares? I guess to wrap up, what's like, uh, what's your biggest piece of advice for like, you know, 12 year old kid who's like watching this and, and you know, just in general to go through his life. What's your biggest piece of advice? I would say, um, I've been getting a couple of DMS about this, um, for the baseball players out there, for the young baseball players, you're still playing baseball. You're not on the bananas. So, uh, <laughs> That's interesting. there's yeah, a lot yeah. of, there's a lot of like parents that'll be like, Oh my gosh, my kid is literally won't stop dancing on the field. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh no, like you're still playing baseball. Mm-hmm. I know it's like, it's, it's fun and everything, but always <laughs> make sure still work hard. Um, life can be tough, but as long as you're pushing along and trudging along and beating to the sound of your own drum, that's like the most important part of life right now. And finding, you'll find yourself. You don't have to worry about finding yourself now. You, Try a bunch of different things. Try what you don't like. Try what you like. And uh, you'll find a place you're meant to be. Yeah. Oh, that was a great way to end. That was a great like quote right there. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining, dude. That was a great conversation. And I'm a huge fan. So yeah. You Thanks do. for so, having me. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Hit a pen, I pull up heavy. In the lay up on a eddy. I got three hoes, run the valley. In New Dios, not for belly. Stay that money, I for Perry. I shoot droppers, call me Larry. Then they ain't Yonkers, I need a Navy. Don't need a sponsor, hurry they have.